that's fantastic. That's actually 8%, 5%, 1.5%. That's some significant insider ownership. That's great. Hi everyone, today I'm looking at a company called C Limited and it has been growing like a weed in Southeast Asia and it's just expanded in South America. This company has been, I've been keeping an eye on for quite a while now because of Dennis Hong at Shore Spring Partners has invested heavily into this company and it's, well, it looks pretty interesting. I love e-commerce plays. So let's take a look at it today. I'll do my quick valuation through using my nine point checklist and then give you my opinion and evaluation at the end. Let's do it. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with the company C Limited, it's a massive gaming e-commerce payment giant of Southeast Asia, Vietnam, Indonesia, places like that. Current market cap is $200 billion. Now, it was only like $20 billion a year or two ago. So this has just gone nuts. They have a really interesting partnership with Tencent where Tencent owns about 25% of the company. Now, I think the most important part of this business, even though their gaming part is bigger at the moment, I think Shopee is where it's the most important because that's what's growing the quickest because it is the e-commerce, it's sort of like Alibaba, Amazon kind of equivalent of the Southeast Asian world. It has passed Alibaba's backed Lazada out of Singapore and Shopee is now really starting to dominate this, this part of the world. And they've also just successfully expanded into South America to start taking on Mercadi Libra, which is the big e-commerce giant in South America and Brazil. Now there's still so much upside here for C Limited, just because it's a $200 billion market cap, doesn't mean it couldn't possibly get to say a trillion dollars because Southeast Asia, at the moment, it's the e-commerce market is worth about $100 billion. They're expecting it to be 300 billion just in 2025. So that's a tripling of that. Then you've got the South America play, which at the moment is only a small part of their business, but that is also a hundred billion, multiple hundred billion dollar play as well. Now I'm actually just gonna quickly go through my checklist today just to see if there's any red flags. I won't explain each of these individual topics. I've done this in all my other videos, so we'll just do it pretty quick today. First up, I wanna see revenue growth. And yes, revenue's been, well, it's been growing exceptionally, especially the last two or three years. So we'll give that a tick. Gross margins, we would like to see this above 40%. And at the, it's, it's getting close at the moment, it's about 37%. It has been growing over the last few years. It's getting close. We can probably give it a tick because it looks like it's gonna get there in the next year or two. Next up is return on invested capital. And this is gonna be a bit of a problem because they are not making any, they're not making any profit at the moment. Therefore, yeah, return on invested capital is negative 41%. We pretty much gotta not use that as a metric here today. So we're gonna to have to give that a cross. Next up is debt. Now this is really important. I don't want them to have mountains of debt just because they're fueling their growth, but we'll, it also means they might be diluting us as well because they have to grow somehow and they're not making any profit. So uh, let's have a look at their financial position. So they have $9.4 billion in current assets and that's significantly more than about the 6 billion in current liabilities. Actually, if we add up the 6 billion of current liabilities and their 2 billion of long-term liabilities, What's that? About eight billion, and they've they've got more short-term assets than their entire liability. So that's a good financial position. We can give that a tick. Next up is free cash flow. We definitely want to see this growing. This is what we would be making as owners of the company. And free cash flow, well, it had been negative all the way up until 2020, and now it looks like it's going to be 400 or 430 odd million dollars in 2021. Now C Limited, you can access on the New York Stock Exchange through the ADR listing. So you don't need you don't need a brokerage account that can access everywhere in the world, but I highly recommend getting one because if you want to invest in Australia or England or Japan or Hong Kong or something like that, Robinhood and Webull and those types of apps, they're not going to cut it. You're not going to get access to these marketplaces. And I think that's really important. Don't want to narrow yourself down to just America. You really need to make sure that you get the biggest pool of investment ideas. I use Interactive Brokers and Saxo Bank for this. Interactive Brokers, in the description, there's a link. You can go and check out a demo account and see whether it's suitable for you. That's the, that's the one I prefer because the fees are the lowest and it's got a long stable history. So that's my recommendation there. Okay, now back to the checklist. Let's go to shares outstanding. I'm a bit worried about this one. Let's have a look. Yep, so since 2015, it's essentially doubled the shares outstanding number. So 
We have to give that across. That means we're getting diluted as shareholders, which is a problem. Okay, next up is insider ownership. We just want the management team to have the same incentives as the shareholders. So we want them to have a big stake in the company. And it looks like the founders, founder, found, co-founder, co-founder, they have $16.5 billion worth of ownership, 10 billion, 3 billion. Their net worth is obviously heavily aligned to the success of C Limited. That's all we really needed to see. Uh, that's fantastic. That's actually 8%, 5%, 1.5%. That's some significant insider ownership. That's great. Next up is super investors. And I already said that Dennis Hong at Shore Spring Partners is invested in this company. It's one of his biggest holdings. And if I take a look at Data Roma, there's also a couple of other Chase Coleman, John Armitage, Lee Ansley. Um, Chase Coleman at Tiger Global Management have about 5% of their portfolio in this. Look, I'm actually just not familiar with these managers and these funds at all. So I can't really take much away from this one, but I do know Dennis Hong over at Shore Spring Partners and I've studied him in detail before. So I'm gonna give this a tick. Now, last but not least is price. Now, regardless of how fast this company is growing, we don't wanna overpay. Even if it's growing at like 50, 60% per year, which it is, we, we, there's still a number that is just too much that we're not gonna pay for it regardless of how fast it's growing. Now to do this calculation, I use my discounted cash flow model, which I have a link in the description for. Now, check out these numbers. This is, this is very interesting. Now I've got the growth rates for the next five years. That's five years at 50% per year. Now they might do it for the next one or two years, five years in a row. Analysts think it's gonna grow at 50% for the next year, but I'm gonna say it's five years of 50% growth. That's that's exceptional growth. Then we're gonna to have to slow it down a, l a little bit because it, look, 50% is insane. Let's slow it down to 25%. I'll use my normal discount rate that I'm going for. Now with those epic growth rates, we're gonna say that the multiple we could sell it for is way above what I would normally give to any company, which is 40 times free cash flow. This is the free cash flow, the shares outstanding, the total cash and debt. And it says I wanna buy this at around about $44. Now, if I go have a look at the current share price, go have a look at it yourself. It's about $340. So look, we're not, we're not even close here. Now, let me adjust to find a fair value. Now to do that, I just put in 10% as my discount rate. And it's saying that fair value with these exceptional growth metrics is around about 200, maybe $220 a share. It's at 340, remember. So, so even with these exceptionally aggressive growth metrics, I think the valuation of the company at the moment on the stock market is not even close to what it's even an aggressive fair valuation is. So look, I would want it to be, it's not gonna make even any sense when I adjust these numbers. I'm talking like under $50 kind of thing. And at 350, uh, let's not even bother. So I think this is a classic case at the moment where the growth and the potential of the company has overhyped the stock and people have just seen it go up maybe tenfold in the last couple of years and think that it can continue doing that for a long period of time. On, this, on the stock market in particular. Now, my calculations say that's that's very, very unlikely. And I think the upside potential is now very limited because I think it's already played out. And the downside is pretty high because it has to really kind of go back down to fair value, you would think. So look, I know it's growing like a weed. I know that the regional Southeast Asia tower winds are very, very positive. South America is a massive market as well. It, it could go from a $200 billion company to 500 billion, I don't know, maybe a trillion, but how many years is that gonna actually take? And I think that, look, based on how much money it's currently making, which it's making zero profit by the way, but it is making some free cash flow, this is a long way away from getting to that point. Now I do really like that Tencent is a big owner of C Limited. So if you invested in Tencent, which is at a far better valuation, well, you do get the exposure and the potential upside of C Limited as well. But look, if it, if it goes down or the C Limited investment goes down, well, Tencent is such a massive conglomerate with all these other investments as well. It's not gonna be a big deal for Tencent in particular. So you're still getting a little bit of the C Limited play, I guess, essentially, if you invest in Tencent, which I technically have. Now, the company themselves even said that they're probably gonna be unprofitable until about 2025. It's a long time to wait. Look, it's a growth first, profit later idea. Look, Amazon did this. Uh, a lot of companies have done this in the past and have been massively successful because of it. So maybe C Limited can pull this off. I don't really know. Again, 
I prefer to have my ownership in 10 cent, which gives me some exposure, which is fine. Now back to that shares outstanding dilution point. Now, I think it's actually not that bad that they're issuing more shares to raise money rather than get out debt because I think the valuation is extremely high. Therefore, I think that's an easy way for them to raise money is just dilute their shareholders. And if people are willing to pay $350 a share for, for the stock, well, great, great way for them to raise some money. So I'm not actually that concerned about the shares outstanding for this company. If I was running the company, I'd probably want to do the same thing. But as an investor, this is a terrible idea. Now, I think we've just totally missed this one. It's an exceptional company and it's got a very interesting company culture. From what I've read so far anyway, it's the, those co-founders, they're very smart guys and they have done a lot of work on understanding Indonesia and Vietnam and the Southeast Asian market to become number one. And looks like they're even growing that number one market share position. So the gap between number one and number two is getting bigger essentially. Now, just like Dennis Hong was able to do back in 2018, 2019, if we were able to see that C Limited were improving their market share uh, and, and, and differentiating themselves from the competition, it might have been possible to find this company and had a 10, 20, 30 bagger return already just in two or three years. But like I said, we've totally missed this one. Now by taking a look at this company, it has given me a little hope that maybe there is another C Limited out there in the world where if I was able to pay attention to the market share growth and its dominant market position that it was heading towards, maybe I could get onto something that is like a C Limited back in 2018, 2019 and get 20, 30 X return in a quite a short period of time. I see it is possible. It's very difficult, but just by following along with C Limited is, is giving me insights into potentially other company. Now, I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you got any value out of it, make sure to hit that like button before you go and I'll see you next time.